Hello, what's up YouTube Ronnie's with it and tutorial and in this tutorial we want to, be, we want to do skin retouching for a half body portrait or full body portrait images in Photoshop. So this is what I do for these kinds of images and if at all this is going to be helpful don't forget to like this video don't forget to subscribe if at all you have been watching from this channel for the very first time. So let's just kick in and start doing skin retouching for this very image. So by the way this mod is called Mavis. So let's just first of all learn about the technique of frequency separation which we are going to be incorporating in this very image or in this very tutorial today. So first of all frequency separation divides the image into the high frequency layer and the low frequency layer. So basically the high frequency layer contains the textures and the low frequency layer contains the colors or the skin tones in the image. So when we combine both layers we're going to be coming back to this original image so let's first of all create those layers by hitting ctrl j twice or command j twice and you're going to name this layer low frequency and you're going to name the upper layer high frequency just like that and first of all we're going to deactivate the high frequency layer and select the low frequency layer so for this layer we only want to remain with the colors or the skin tones so I'm going to simply come to filter, come to blur and come to Gaussian blur. And now take the radius all the way down. So we want to move this radius and blur out the textures from this particular layer. So in order to do that, we're going to move this radius. So simply click on this radius and start moving it up to a point when you're losing out on the details or textures in the image. So I think a radius of 5 is enough for us. Simply hit OK and now you can see the image turns out to look a little bit blurry. So come to the high frequency layer and select it. And now activate it and after activating it, simply come to file image rather and come to apply image. So when you come to apply image, we only want to remain with the textures in this high frequency layer. So simply come to the uh, layer and select the low frequency layer because we want to subtract the textures from the low frequency layer and come and change the blending mode from a multiply and change it to add since we are dealing with a 16 bit image right here but if at all you're dealing with an 8 bit image you can simply use subtract as a blending option and for a 16 bit image you're going to be using a scale of 2 and offset 0 but if at all you're using an 8-bit image the scale is going to be 2 and offset 128 and now you're going to now select invert since this is a 16-bit image and now come and click OK so as you can see the textures are now on this gray kind of layer so I want to get a blending option that is going to reveal back the image which is linear light so come to normal and look for linear light just like that and you get back the image the way it was looking initially before so after doing that you're going to put these two in a group by hitting command and clicking on both layers and hit ctrl or command g on the keyboard and you're going to name that uh, frequency I'm just going to abbreviate that fs for frequency separation so you can see the before and after there is no difference between the original image and our frequency separation a group meaning you have successfully separated the frequencies of this particular portrait so come and open this group just like that and after opening it you can either create a black and white layer inside of the frequency separation uh, group by selecting the high frequency layer and coming to adjustments and creating a black and white adjustment layer and now simply come and darken it slightly just like that then come under the brushes and get your mixer brush tool and for settings for mixer brush tool make sure it is a clean brush and we have two options right here always make sure to select the second option because you want the brush to automatically be cleaned by photoshop every time you are trying to blend or even out the skin tones in this particular image we are going to be using a wetness of around uh, nine percent the load 75 mix 90 and the flow at 100 Make sure sample all layers is not checked or marked because you want only deal with the low frequency layer. So come and select the low frequency layer 
and now start evening out the skin tones in the image so you can start by just you left click and move up and down depending on the area you're trying to uh, blend or even out so just do that and as we are doing this you're going to notice that it is going to be doing a really nice job uh, trying to even out or blend uh, the tones in this particular image so when you turn off the black and white layer you can see the before and after you have just even out we have just evened out like the tones or the colors in the arm area of the model so you're just going to move down and try to even out this particular area so you can either work with the help of the black and white layer or you can simply abandon it and you work without the use of the black and white layer so the use of a black and white layer is just to simply guide us and show us where the skin tones are not even enough so hit command plus or control plus to zoom in and hold down the space bar and click to move the image around since we want to blend a smaller surface or area of the face i'm just going to get back to my black and white layer and reduce on the size by using the brackets on the keyboard and left click and start evening out the tones and when you're evening out these tones always make sure to blend the mid tones alone the highlights alone and the shadows alone in a particular image so just do that and you won't be able to distort like uh, the original shape of uh, the model's face so just do that simply and you always have to take less time trying to even out these tones because no one is going to zoom the image up to uh, this size anyway so but you have or you have to always make sure to even out those tones because you have to be careful as a retoucher or photographer out there so always make sure to even them out really well and nicely and you leave a uh, no stone unturned in uh, your images so I think that looks fine so turn off the black and white to see what you have done so you can see the before and after before after you have just retained the original tones in the model's face like i said you can as well work without uh, the help of uh, the black and white layer in order to see well every uneven skin tone in the image you're trying to uh, retouch or uh, blend tones onto so let's just do that and just come and blend right here so I think uh, this looks nice and okay. So let's see the before and after so far. You can see the before and after, before, after, before, after. So right now we're going to come and get the lasso tool. And we're going to zoom in slightly. And now fine tune the image even more. So lasso tool feathering is 22 pixels. Ant alias is selected or checked. And come and fine tune the model's face even more. So left click and draw a shape around the skin area come to filter blur and come back to gaussian blur this time around this radius which we had when we are trying to create africa separation group you can simply move this radius towards the right hand side up to a point when, you, when you're seeing the nice skin textures in the image but since i already found out that if i told you you multiply this radius by three you get the nice or best textures out of your images so i'm just going to put a uh, 5 times 3 which is 15 and that will be nice so i want to apply that effect onto uh, the overall image so right click and come to gaussian blur i'm just going to do that uh, onto the rest of uh, the model's face so i think that is fine so i'm just going to apply it right there so right click and come to gaussian blur and you can click on the space to deselect so i think uh, that looks nice so i'm just going to come and apply it right here and after i'm done applying uh, it right there you can see the before and the after before after i have just i uh, made the image look nice and beautiful so come the high frequency because we want to remove uh, these uh, kind of blemishes from the model's skin so come and get the clone sample tool and when you're on this layer which contains the textures you're just going to 
hold down the alternate key. So past and flow at 100. Sampling is on the current layer, not current and blue, because we don't want to sample information from right below here. So hold down the alternate key and click like that to remove the blemish. So hold down the alternate and click on a clean area. So alternate, you left click on a clean area and simply click over the blemish to eliminate it or get rid of it from the image. So just do that. And since uh, we have less blemishes to work with in this particular case, we're just going to take less time trying to clean up or remove blemishes from this particular uh, portrait. So let's just do this. And I think uh, that is nice. So I'm just going to zoom out and see the progress so far. So we started here and here we are right now. We have just done less of the skin retouching, but the image really looks nice and stunning. So come and select the black and white layer and now delete it. So right now what we want to do, we want to color grade this image so that we can have a beautiful image before exporting it the best way and the best and sharp way or method in Photoshop. So you're going to create a stamp visible layer by hitting Shift alternate control E on the keyboard or shift alternate command E on the keyboard to create a stamp visible layer. And you're going to simply duplicate that by hitting control or command J as a backup and come back to filter, come to the camera roll filter and we're going to be color grading this image to look even better and nicer. So come all the way down to the calibration option and you're going to we are going to first of all reduce on the saturation of the red primary to around negative 10 and also do the same for the green primary to around negative 10 or 8 can do. So let's see the green primary. I think I'm just going to put the green primary to around negative 11. So you can see the before and the after for the calibration option. And now we're going to come all the way up to the HSL panel and come the luminance of the oranges and simply drop down the luminance of the oranges in this image. Then come to the hues of the orange and we're just going to add that kind of greenish feel to the oranges in this case to around 6. And I think that looks fine. So you can see the before and after for the camera color grading. And now what we want to do, we are going to come to the eyes and give the eyes a more nice and defined look. So click to zoom in the eyes, get the adjustment brush tool. And now turn the temperatures down to around a negative 21 and the tint to around 60. And you're going to come to the highlights and turn it up to around 4. And the whites to around 4. And now we're going to come the saturation and desaturate it to around negative 63. And now reduce on the size by using the brackets. So you can use this option right here and start painting over. So you left click and start painting over the white area of the eye just like that. And after this, we are just going to color grade this image even more in uh, Photoshop itself. So come and simply hit OK to go back into Photoshop for more color grading. So come to the selective color option and you're going to come to the blacks in particular. And first of all, intensify on the blacks in the image to around three. And since we want to add that kind of cinematic look or feel to the image, you're going to move the yellows towards uh, this side to add that kind of bluish tone or cinematic tone to the blues in the image. And after doing that, you're going to come to the reds and you're going to slightly reduce on the amount of yellows in the reds to around negative two. And I think this is fine for me. So before and after, before, after, you can see how the image is now looking nice and beautiful. So right now we want to export the image the best way so that it is really sharp and doesn't change in color when we post it maybe on social media or put it on a different device. So simply come to file and come to export and come to export as. So when you come to export as, it is going to open up this little window right here. So as this window is loading, 
and it is done loading always make sure the format is a jpeg because this is supported by most social media platforms or devices resampling make sure that the resampling is about uh, on the bicubic sharper because we want a sharp image to be exported or saved on our device or given location and come and select embed color profile and convert to SR, uh, srgb so make sure you select both options right here and now you can see that it is going to load and after it is done loading simply hit export and you can simply uh, rename this to maybe full portrait just like that and after doing that select where you want uh, your photo to be saved or exported to and simply hit save and after it is done saving it is automatically going to close this window and this is all for today's tutorial so let's say before and after so this was the image in initially before and after before after before after and if at all you have loved this story don't forget to give this video a like and don't forget to subscribe if at all you have been watching from this channel and you have never subscribed before Ronix from Ronix Photography thank you for watching and I'll see you in yet another tutorial and don't forget to keep practicing and keep creating